Okay, F3, furnace four. We got a call because this oil is accumulating down here, which is a very good visual catch. Definitely dripping off of this elbow. So we first just checked to see if that bad boy was leaking and it's pretty tight. So we're gonna get our bubble solution and start to check uh, some of these joints and this one here. See the, you know, they've had a good, good run, but we'll see what we can find. Well, there she is. We tried to add some supports, but... We can try to repair this. The concern though is that when you put heat here, it's gonna cause all these to come loose. So the easiest way to do this is to change this coil out. Uh, otherwise, we're gonna need to probably braze this whole set. Uh, and then we also have this metering device that should still be working fine. But yeah, she's a leaker. It almost looks like this one isn't all the way in the hole, right? Where this shoulder is resting against the pipe and that one. But like, it's definitely sticking up more than the rest. All right, all aluminum coil going in to replace this old one. trap in here. Uh, it's optional with this configuration, but these units just trap so much oil being below the units the way they are. So we're putting in the optional oil traps uh, just to make sure that oil is not logging up this evaporator and it's being rejected out. But I think we're going to have to kind of shorten this up and do some sort of U-turn into the unit. All right, it's about time to raise this bad boy in. We got everything fitted up. Uh, we're gonna need to protect it with both wet rags and our compound. So we want all this oil to flow downhill. So we are pitched into the trap, which is the lowest point. So in the off cycle, all oil should accumulate here. When we start up, that should be assisted back to the roof. Well, we're just helping this out as much as we can because through experience, we found these coils like to kind of fill with oil. So we're giving it every chance to get that oil back out of there. Okay. Before we make the final cut, right, clearly this is still connected. This filter dryer, the corner of this sticker is ever so conveniently missing, but that line is an arrow. And that should be pointing towards the air handler, which is the other direction. So that filter dryer has been in backwards. That's no good. All right, we're getting ready to raise. Just wanna talk about how to flow nitrogen. So we're gonna go in this side, through, and out this side. Where our tank is connected to our manifold, right? We're closed on our suction side, open on our liquid side. So we're gonna flow through the red, through the system, out the blue, and we need to make sure we have an exit point, right? So we're gonna turn, let's just turn our gauges on. I turn the tank on in purge. Make sure everything's open. And now what we're doing here, we wanna make sure that we have some pressure. So let's 
Bump it to test, 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 test. We wanna make sure that there's nitrogen coming out here. Now that we know that we're flowing right, we'll let this purge for a few seconds to get all the air displaced and then we'll switch it to braise and we're ready to go. The only other thing we need to do is get our wet rag to protect this valve. We already removed this Schrader. It's important this Schrader comes out if we're gonna braise near that valve. Ultrasonic for the win. So it just showed me that my hose was a problem. Sure is. Okay. So this is the low, amb low ambient pressure switch. Um, instead of leaving it on this destroyed swivel tee, we just put in a port. Uh, less fittings to vibrate off and clearly nobody backseats these the right way like that's just waiting to be a problem so for now we're gonna assume that this is still good and put it on that port but that also gives us upgrade options things like that so the name of the game is getting these swivel tees out whenever we can all right that's how we do it in colorado while we're pulling the vacuum We get that tank heating up. Tank heater, definitely key. Working in cold. Must have sub zero. And even when bubbles aren't doing it, break out the ultrasonic leak detector to confirm there's no leaks. All right, we're charging by line set length. It's cold as shit out here. So our tank heater, as our tank preheated. Our total charge is going to be nine pounds, eight ounces. So we're watching for it. It's going to happen fast thanks to our tank heater.